Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. About a year and a half ago, I did a series of videos that I called a processing challenge where I took a single image and I processed that single image in a number of different applications. And I was quite surprised that that video series turned out to be very popular. Well, since then, uh, several of those uh, software manufacturers came out with new versions of their software. So I thought it would be fitting for me to redo the series. Uh, we're going to process this single image in a number of different apps. Today, we're going to process it in Lightroom. And in subsequent videos, you'll see me process the same image in Luminar AI, Exposure XX, Capture One, Photo Lab 4, On One Photo Raw 2021, and if people aren't losing interest by then, um, probably do it in Affinity Photo and Photoshop as well. Also, uh, you could download this image if you'd like and just play around with it and see how uh, you'd process it in whatever application you're using. In the description below this video, I'll have a link so you could just download it for free and you could mess around with it as you see fit. Um, also, you may have noticed all those software apps that I named out, uh, excluding Affinity Photo and Photoshop, um, are applications that are included in my software comparison guide. I'll have a link to the software comparison guide, uh, how you could get your copy of it. It's a downloadable PDF. I'll have that linked in the description below this video as well. So. I'm just going to start right into it in Lightroom because Lightroom's kind of like this old guard, right? Everything is kind of compared to Lightroom. So I'll start out, I'll process this image in Lightroom, and then in subsequent videos, as I mentioned, I'll do it in other applications. So what I do, I'm in the develop module of Lightroom, and I'll just go right to the basic tab. And what I like to do is what does the image need most right away? Well, it's it's pretty dark, right? So the uh, shadows, I need to open those up. So I'll do that first. So I opened up the shadows up considerably. Then I'll go to the highlights and I want to rein those in a little bit, bring some more detail out in the sky. So right away, just moving those two sliders made a significant change to the image. Next, I'll get a white and black point. To do that in Lightroom, I'll hold the Option key on my Mac. It's an Alt key on a PC and click on the white slider. The screen turns black when you do that. And as I move it to the right, you'll see that that sun that's in the sunset is starting to come through. So I'm clipping that. I don't necessarily want to clip that that heavily or at all. So I'll just kind of see where it's maybe right about there. I mean, it's hard not to clip it. Typically, for most images, I don't want to clip the highlights at all. So I would move this while holding in my Option key on my Mac until all that was gone. But on a sunset, sometimes it's difficult not to clip. But in this case, I was able to do it, and it still looks pretty good. Now, I'll do the same thing for the Blacks slider. I'll hold in the Option key again on my Mac, Alt on a PC. I'll move it to left, and you can see I'm starting to clip or crush some of the shadows. And that is okay. I don't mind doing that. I would like my images to have a lot of tonal depth. So I like to have absolute black sometimes in my image and then bring it right up to almost clipping in the highlights. And that's pretty good. And sometimes I just eyeball it. It might be a little too dark and I'll just move it to the right a little bit like that. And that looks pretty good. Now, by the way, this was shot with a uh, Sony a7R4. I'll have all the gear listed in the description below this video as well. Uh, so um, that camera does have a lot of um, exposure latitude. So when you're presented with a high dynamic range scene such as this, uh, that camera usually could capture it pretty good. So you'd still have a lot of detail in the darkest parts of the image and the brighter parts of the image. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. But along with that, I shot at a very low ISO. I believe it was an ISO of 100, as you can see up here on the left. So there really isn't a significant amount of noise, if noise at all. At this point in my processing, I would go down to the Detail tab and do something with noise reduction. Now, by default, you can see it already put sharpening at 40. I'll just leave it there. And it put color noise uh, reduction at 25. But I really don't see any noise at all. So I'm not going to move the luminance noise reduction slider at all. I'll just leave that alone. Then I'll jump back up. And what I usually like to do next is color before I do any texture clarity or dehaze. So 
I'll, um, I'm going to forego using the vibrance or saturation sliders, at least for now, and I'm going to jump right down to the HSL. And what I want to do is I want to add more saturation. You can see I'm on the saturation tab of the yellows and the oranges, the colors that are in the sunset. And trying to remember what it looked like when I was there, it wasn't as washed out as it, you know, it appeared. So I want that. I also am um, going to add a little more saturation to the blue, just a little bit. Then I'll jump up to luminance and I'll bring the blue sky a little darker. I'll also move around the yellows and the orange luminance a little bit too. See what that does. And that looks okay. Now I'm not going to do anything with hue. I don't want to change the colors. I just want to bring them back a little bit more to what I remember them being when I was there. So that is pretty good with color, but I will. It's still not quite as colorful, I think, as it really could have been or should have been when I was there or could be in this image. So I'll move saturation up a little bit as well. So that looks pretty good. Now uh, what I'll do is I'll go to texture and clarity. I like to go with these three sliders. I like to work from the bottom up. I don't really need to do anything with dehaze. Uh, you can see that it's kind of overbearing a little bit. So I don't really need, I mean, it really wasn't a hazy, hazy day. Uh, so I don't need to do anything with that, but I'll go to clarity and I'll move that to the right a little bit. And I'll move texture to the right a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm looking at stuff that I want texture to affect. For in instance, the um, ground over here in the foreground, these waves that are breaking here. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm almost done, but um, over here, uh, these cliffs out in the distance are a little bit dark, so I want to do something with that. So what I'm going to do is open up the brush tool, and I'll leave the exposure all the way down for now, only because with exposure all the way down, I could see exactly where I'm painting with the brush. And then what I'll do is I'll have feathering at 100, flow at 100, auto mask off. I don't want to use auto mask and density at 100. So um, to start out, I'll just get a brush and I'm just, I have an Apple Magic Mouse. All I need to do is slide my finger on the mouse to affect the size of the brush. Uh, if you have a mouse with the center click wheel, that should work as well. Also the bracket keys, the left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. So you could come in and then fit that brush to paint exactly where you want. Now I see because I have exposure all the way down, it's really dark. Well, that's okay. That let like helps me see exactly where I'm painting. Now I'll get a smaller brush, come up in here, get some of that tree up there, some of this tree over here, a little bit there maybe, then this end over here. Like this. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna just reset exposure by double clicking right on the word exposure. So that's reset. But what I want to do is I want to brighten that up. So I'm going to turn exposure up. So I'm making that a little brighter. That looks pretty good. I, um, I might want to add a little saturation to that as well. So we'll go to the saturation slider, move that to the right. And if I missed anywhere or I feel like I need to brush somewhere else, I could do that as well. See right in there, but it looks pretty good. I mean, that looks nice. So I like that. Um, I kind of went over a little bit right here. So what I'll do is I'll click on the erase uh, button right here, and then I'll get the brush so it fits there. And I'm going to erase that brush stroke that happened out there. So nothing big. So that is that. And I'm pretty much done. I'm going to go to the effects uh, tab, and I'm going to go and put a darker vignette on it. I just like the darker vignette. It helps kind of draw everyone's attention more towards the middle. And I didn't really need to crop this. I uh, was happened to uh, shoot it in camera the way I wanted it. And it's straight, so I don't really need to do anything with cropping it. And I'd say this is done. So this is my um, rendition or version of this specific scene, this specific image, uh, processed in Lightroom. Now, again... Um, Subsequent videos, I'll do it in another app. I don't know, probably go in alphabetical order from this point out. So the next app would be Capture One. So 
probably tomorrow I'll do the video for Capture One and we'll do the same image in Capture One. And again, or I should mention at least, uh, there's really no right or wrong way necessarily uh, to process you. Uh, I don't want to give the impression that you have to process your images just like I did. This is just the way I do it, and it gives you an idea what I do. Maybe you could take a little bit of what I do and a little bit of what someone else's does, some, someone else may do, and then something that you do that's exclusive to you and kind of blend it all together to come up with something that's exclusively, exclusively yours. That's the whole idea, seeing how other people go about things to give you ideas and maybe a direction where you could go. So don't feel that this is the only way anyone should process a sunset. This is the way I processed this sunset. And you could process it too. Uh, too. Again, in the description below this video, there'll be a link. You could just directly download it and mess around with it yourself. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.